Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. A little bit of a change of scenery for yeah. today's video out here in the Hartley. We thought it's kind of an over, hopefully overcast morning. This is such a nice space. It is. When it's Honestly. overcast, it's even better. It's funny though. I mean, I really, I like the look of the Hartley from the mm -hmm. outside, but uh, on the inside, it would be nice if it was a little bit bigger. If you could keep the outside looking smaller. I know, that's the problem. We were looking at the size up from this one. I can't remember what the name. This is the Grand Lodge. Mm -hmm. The other one's the Grand Manor, I think. Yeah. And the scale. They released a new one that's even bigger. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, the, the proportions just, like the proportions of this one look proper. Like the, yeah. the sizes well, of the sides to the doors and all of that, it just looks like the roof isn't too pitched. Right. Um, the size up just had a little bit of a, like, so close but not quite the yeah. right look for me. I don't know. Yeah, I um, agree. I agree. It, it, it's such an investment. You just want it to be kind of like a Willy Wonka thing where it's like you get in there and all of a sudden it's like it's, three times larger expands. on the inside. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever actually wished for it to be larger in here. Really? Necessarily. No. I don't hmm. think so. Um, I mean, I have had several questions about like why we don't have more plants in here and why you know why aren't you using it like a real greenhouse? But it's more of a. I mean, we well, there's plants in here, yeah. but I definitely don't have anything massive because I wanted a dining table. Like I wanted it to be an extension of our living space, and I don't want people to feel uncomfortable walking around it. So that's why I keep like these corners pretty empty. Um, the center, we usually have something in the center. I haven't brought anything back in, but I like it to feel spacious too. I don't like things to feel like too much. Would you have made any changes to like the color or the type of brick or, I mean? Nope. You know what? The location of the, um, the power box. On the outside. Yeah, maybe. Hindsight, I would have probably tucked it in back behind where a bench was going to go. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time, I wanted the two, like the north and south side that have the doors. I knew we'd be flanking it with benches or something beautiful, and I didn't want to look at that and see. But I don't think I would have seen it behind all the stuff. Sure. I don't know. We'll get something figured out plant-wise. Yeah. Anyway, that is not the point of today's video. Uh, we will just jump right in. I don't think there's anything we needed to... No, about. I don't think so. Um, first video was a windy garden cleanup, plus, uh, starting straw flowers, gumfrina, and crispidia seeds. There's just like a point in time where you just have to like, go out, no matter yeah. if it's windy or rainy or whatever, just so you can get stuff done. And it was kind of one of those days, and it was really satisfying. And I don't mind it once I'm in it. Like the anticipation, like looking from out inside, looking through the window and seeing the wind blow, and you know kind of sprinkling and you kind of think, oh, it's going to be the worst. But once I was, I get into projects like that, I, I love it. I kind of get in the zone yeah. most of the time. And then we started a few seeds in the greenhouse, uh, which all of them are up. Like 100% of them are up at this point. Uh, Nita said, what is the name of the box we planted by the Hartley? I know you said when you planted them when they were smaller. They are green velvets. And I am like this close to pulling them all out and planting something different. Really? Yeah. I don't like them. They don't. They look so bad in the parterre, and we haven't even had a hard winter. Yeah, they like might so just be new and need maybe need a little bit of time. But at this point in time, like today, I'm like, you know, it's mm, so I should have put winter gems in. Yeah, would winter gems be too big for the area? No, I don't think so. I mean, green velvets were supposed to say stay more deep green, mm -hmm. uh, which if you don't count the winter kill. They are deep green <laughs> <laughs> and they stay smaller, which we thought, you know, initially it might be kind of nice to have a smaller statured boxwood. Yeah. Um, right now, today, if I could pull them out and put winter gems in, I probably would, but maybe we'll give them some time. I miss a lot of boxwood, so we'll probably give them time. I'm not going to make a decision off of one winters. Yeah. We did plant them late, so. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. sort of late. Yeah. Um, Terry Kim said, if you were a stay-at-home stay mom, would your gardens look, what would your gardens look like, not a YouTuber? Well, not like this, that's <laughs> for so sure. They'd be a lot smaller, um, probably more simple, because if I you know, was, was watching the kids 100% of the time, uh, it's def that's a full-time job right there. Um, and it's fun to incorporate the kids when they're interested. I don't wanna force them to do stuff. They'll have chores, they'll be helping out with chores and things, but um, like just during their free time, if they mm -hmm. don't wanna be helping in the garden, I will force them to do that. Uh, I would like to think that they would still be pretty, the gardens. You know, knowing you, uh, you're a really hard worker, and if you were a stay-at-home mom and you didn't have anything else going on, I think that you would really own it. I think you'd be like a really good one. Maybe. Because you, I feel like you're 
already a stay-at-home mom, but sort like of. with a full-time job too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we have help with the kids. Like yeah. someone is watching the kids right now. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's an interesting thing to think about. We occasionally talk about like, what if we were still doing what we were doing before? What would we have done if we would have had kids, you know, 10 years before we did? Yeah. You know, what would life be like? We had kids fairly late. We did. Although now I think that's maybe more common. I was 33 and 36. Yeah. Yeah. People wait babies. a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Purple Pumpkin said, I've tried growing Crispedia twice and they don't even germinate. Is there a trick? I don't know. I have seeds that are just two seasons old and I have a humidity dome on top. I need your wisdom. I have never had problems with my Crispedia coming up. I do use vermiculite. I don't think that those want to be covered. They either need light to germinate or like barely need anything over the top of them. And I want to say that I just kind of like press them into the soil and then cover them with vermiculite. So maybe try that if you have it. Next question. Did you notice the temperature in the greenhouses drop very much during the power outage? Do you have generators? We've been talking a lot about generators slash solar yeah. over the past week. Uh, but you know, the, the temperatures did drop in mm -hmm. the greenhouses. And I told Aaron like that was would be my only concern. Like inside the house, we have fireplaces that we can, um, we've got wood, you know, to light fires if we needed to. But out here, things would just be, you know, they're yeah. on their own. We actually thought for a brief moment, and I don't know, maybe maybe it'll happen at some point, but you know the, the back property we just bought that's connected to the red barn, like kind of in the back corner-ish, since we're gonna be focusing pasture area in the other space, we thought, well, what if we just planted, not something tall, obviously, but something to hide solar panels. What if we just dedicated part of that back corner to solar panels? It's super sunny out there. I think it there. would take up a lot more than a corner. Like a quarter of it, do you think? I think it would take the, uh, the whole, um, if you did one bank, just uh -huh. one bank, I uh -huh. think it would take up the entire length. Or okay. not the entire length, but a, uh, the majority of the entire length. You could like have a little bit length. on it. Uh, or going to east the and west. Oh, I was thinking like shorter and like stacked. Like more yeah, you could do that. That's what, kind of what I was thinking. Maybe. I never even envisioned, envisioned it being a super long thing. Anyway, we talked about that because you could totally hide it with just even like elderberry shrubs, sort yeah. of a situation. You know, so neighbors didn't see it. We didn't see it. And then we I could got, be... I got a bid. And it, yeah, it well, was a lot. It's a ton. Although, I did run the math. If, a, if you finance it, I don't think it, it pencils out. But if you have the money to do solar, at least with, with the amount of money, it's around like the 15 year mark that it would, uh, it would actually be a better investment to do solar than to like put it in the S&P 500 or something like that. Like mm -hmm. if, you, if you had a chunk of money and you were like, what should I do with this money? Should I get mm -hmm. solar and not have a power bill or should I invest in you know, the stock market? Mm -hmm. um, so as long as you don't move, because if you move then you know, I doubt that it would increase the value of your property. I think solar is just kind of one of those things that if it comes with the house, it's like great, but people don't seek out houses with solar. Except for our house is kind of unique in the fact that it's running several different outbuildings yeah. and it's large and we need electricity to run our water, all of that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I would think that it would be a, a slight boon to have solar. Maybe. Installed. I think our, our property now would be so hard to sell. It's so like... Uh, yeah. Just what we've made it, yeah. you know, that I think most people would be like, oh, geez, yeah, I, no. <laughs> I don't want like a working garden. Like yeah, this. yeah. Too much work. Right. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> maybe, um, maybe we could work out a deal where like Paul comes with the house or something. Oh, <laughs> keep, keep the place up for you. I'm sure he'd be real happy about that. <laughs> Um, Not that we're going to sell anyway. I don't no. know why. That's just always on my mind. Whenever yeah, I think so about nice. a large purchase, mm -hmm. I, it's like I can't help but think, well, what if? Well, what you if like we to pencil sold? it out. You like to see yeah, like, I want to know what makes sense. And I don't know. You have to, you can't put a price on like peace of mind and all of that stuff. And I don't know if it necessarily like would bring you or I a ton of peace of mind to have solar. Uh, it would for me because I mean like... I, that's another one of those things where I, I don't think that the grid is ever going to go down. But, but it did. you know, in the same way, I don't think we're ever going to sell. Mm -hmm. But we you could. Never you never know. And so, yeah. like, if you installed solar and had mm -hmm. like the whole battery system and everything, mm -hmm. and then like five years later the grid goes down for mm -hmm. an extended period of time, you'd be like, yeah. "Boom! I just did that." Because <laughs> you could run your well. Yeah. I mean, you could as long as you could defend your property, I guess. <laughs> I that love, might be a problem. <laughs> I love uh, thinking of scenarios of like what would happen in like an end of the world scenario. Do you ever think of that? Never. Really? Mm -mm. 
I am completely here and now. Most people would be like super unprepared. It's really interesting when you ask people, because every once in a while, just for fun, I'll ask people if they've ever thought of it. And sometimes mm -hmm. people do. And it's crazy how like how people haven't thought it through. Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, I could totally stay in my property. But really they have like no water source yeah. or, you know, mm -hmm. they couldn't actually. They've got mm -hmm. maybe like a month's supply of food and that's it. Mm -hmm. And even that would probably be stolen from them right away. Mm. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Super fun light topic well, to talk the, about. <laughs> that's the thing. You've got to think, you have to be able to defend your property uh -huh. and you have to have a water source that you can defend. You have to have yeah. a power source that you can defend. Right. And everything comes down to defense too. Uh -huh. So like, if, if you can't defend your property, then no one's going to fare well. You never know. You never know. Okay. Carol said, can you explain why you need electricity for watering? Um, because our pump or our well has pumps that require electricity to pump our water out. They sell, um, uh, we should get one of those. Pumps. See, like part of it, part of like the whole prepper mentality uh -huh. and, and watching how people like, do their food storage, part of that fascinates me. Yeah. I would never be organized enough it's to like, do that. It's but, like people who are couponers. Like I would yeah. never do coupons, uh -huh. but I do find it interesting when people yes. do do that and I like to hear how they do it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel the same way about prepping. Like I'm not prepared for the end of the world, mm -hmm. but I am interested to see how people do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, D herself said, what is the rake that Laura is using to clear out the beds, please? It is a Fiskars shrub rake. And I like both sides of sizes of their rake. They're made out of the same thing, just one is wider. I think it's called a leaf rake maybe. Mm -hmm. And then there's the shrub rake. I like the shrub rake in flower beds because it's narrow and the tines are really kind of like fl flexible. You used to use a metal one. Do you the not bond, like that one anymore? The bond collapsible. I still have one, I think. Yeah. Or maybe that last one broke and Fiskars just had sent us out the rakes and I started using them and I liked it. Uh -huh. But I like the bond one too. It's cheap. It's like 15 bucks. Yeah. And it collapses and that's what we used at the garden center all the time because it didn't move gravel around but neither does the shrub rake. Yeah. Um, it's pretty, like the tines are lightweight enough that they'll kind of bounce over it. I mean, it doesn't mean you don't ever get a rock in your pile of leaves but um, it, I really like it. Uh, Nicole said, why do you rake and get rid of all the leaves? Don't they add nutrients to the soil? Yeah, they could if they break down. It depends too on where, how thick they are. I think uh, if you have a super duper thick layer, they can kind of mat and create like, I don't know, not a good thing. Um, we also don't get a tremendous amount of moisture like we do in the spring. We're getting a lot of moisture now, which is awesome and snow in the hills, which is where our water comes from, uh, which is great. But down here, it just takes so long for things to break down and they also harbor over bad insects and that's our one of our main reasons of getting rid of most of the leaves uh, because you know we'll have spider mites and thrips and things like that winter over in leaf debris and I would rather get rid of the leaves add my own compost in than have to spray a chemical to get rid of bugs later on so that's my philosophy I know everybody's got a different take on that uh, Jodine said I noticed you're not using your Dewalt pruner does it still work uh, I read reviews that it doesn't last very long I was hoping to buy one but don't want to waste some money if they don't last um, the battery operated one. Yeah. I kind of forget about it, that it's yeah. there. Part of it scares me a little bit Get because finger you, in there. you could lop a finger off so fast. Yeah. And if any, if either of the kids are going to be anywhere near me, they don't mess with stuff, but you never know. Yeah. Um, it, that scares me. Like that's the kind of stuff I'll lay awake in bed right. and think about like, oh, what if I had the, you know, the pruner and the gator when Benjamin was out there? Sure. Um, I usually, if I do have it, I keep the battery disconnected because it just scares me. It does make really quick work. It works great still, and we still use it. Um, I just, yeah, forget about it sometimes. Next video was winter sewing update, Eugenia repot and organizing the greenhouse. So I uh, just showed you what was going on in our winter sewing jugs. We've got a few of them that have sprouted and are coming up. Uh, repotted these Eugenias, which they are looking so good, and they haven't dropped any leaves since we repotted, and it's been like a week or so. Do those have to stay inside? There is own eight, okay, I think. So or, yeah, so yes. Are you planning on putting them out for the winter Maybe. or for the summer? Maybe. They'd okay. actually look pretty if I popped them right out yeah. in front of the doors. Uh, I don't know how they're going to do in full, full hot sun. So oh. we'll see. There's a difference between our hot searing sun and like a humid sun. You almost need to put them out the other door. <laughs> yeah, that the would, well, side. but I've got those really pretty leaf motif urns you can out there. Put those on the up. front. Or that would that not look good? Maybe a little cluster of pots. Yeah. I'm kind of getting away from that a little bit. I kind of like singular. It's kind of like um, mixed succulent arrangements. I still enjoy putting them together, but I also am really enjoying like a single variety in a oh, pot. Sure. Like very clean and letting it kind of do its thing. I don't know. You kind of go through those. No. Yeah. Deal. 
Uh, Katrina said, uh, oh, and then I organized the greenhouse. I needed it and it felt really good. Katrina said, my, and my gardener recommended sterilizing your soil with boiling water to f uh, control fungus gnats before planting seedlings. So I tried this and nothing germinated. What are your thoughts on this method? He's pretty knowledgeable and I would trust what he says. And you know, I've watched several of his videos whenever I need like a different take on something, he's a really good resource. Um, so I don't think boiling your soil had anything to do with your seeds not germinating unless like you put your seeds right into the boiled soil that was like super hot. But I doubt that's what you did. Um, I've never boiled my soil, so, or boiling water. I've, I've never done that, yeah. Uh, Sadie said, how do you manage all this when you go on a long vacation? What's a long vacation? What is that? <laughs> what is that? Uh, do those exist? We need to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we haven't gone on like long vacations for a while. I think our last longer vacation was when we went to England, like when we started this channel. 2014. Yeah. Uh, we took the kids to the coast last fall. That was a super quick trip, but we'll start taking more and more vacations now that the kids are like, both of them are potty trained. Both yeah. of them are out of naps. They're not na like Samantha's not napping anymore, which is crazy. She went from three to four hour naps every single day to nothing. Yeah. Like in the matter of a week. She still sleeps like 12 hours at night though. She, she sleeps a lot at night, which is great. But yeah, it's it's freed up the days quite yeah. a lot. So that is that is nice. And now we don't have to worry about, you know, if we go on vacation, where's Samantha gonna nap? Are we gonna be around the hotel at nap time? Because it was super essential that she got it. Uh, Star Mountain Garden said, how often do you fertilize the geraniums? Well, once a week if they're lucky, but it's usually every other week that they get it. And they're, they're getting full strength fertilizer now and they're doing great. Uh, Gracie said, how do your cats not destroy seedlings? I'm cat proofing my seed starting shelves currently. I don't know. I don't know how I get away. Okay, so th there is one thing I do in the greenhouse. Um, if there's anything super important, like the ranunculus are still sitting in there, I never moved them to the basement. So if there's open trays of dirt anywhere, I mean, you're just asking for it. So I put chicken wire over the top of those and like extra saucers just to block the cats from getting in there and doing anything. And then also when I have seed trays on those tables, the cats like to get on the tables and walk along the backside. So I just give them a path. As long as they have a path, they don't have to walk on anything. And I learned that the hard way because I, I was trying to maximize space and I put pushed a bunch of my seed trays mm -hmm. against the wall and they got stepped on. I was able to fix them, but I thought, oh, well, yeah, the cats still, like this is their warm space yeah. this time of year. And all three of them, a lot of the time are in there, especially if one of us Those is. Those cats are so pampered. They are. Somebody asked, I don't know if it's in here. They asked what you thought about cats, if you even liked them, because I don't see you playing with them. <clears throat> I, <laughs> I can't imagine you playing with a cat. I think the cats are fine. Um, Cheddar has been spraying on things. That's gross. That's not cool. He's always been that way. Yeah, I mean like. He came to us as an adult. We had him fixed, but yeah. once they have that pattern ingrained, fixing doesn't necessarily take care of it. I'm sure you feel differently, but like if he were to keep it up, it would be enough for me to get rid of him easily. And send him down the road. Um, the other cats are fine. Uh, they kind of know to get out of my way. Like I definitely, I definitely use my foot to like scoot them out of my way so that, uh, and they're pretty trained most of the time. When they mm -hmm. see my boots coming, <laughs> they get out of the way. That is the most frustrating thing. I don't even like it when the kids do it either. It's just like, but you understand kids are gonna be kids, mm -hmm. but like they'll just like stop right in your path. Yes, I don't like that either. And I don't like animals rubbing on my legs either. Yeah. Like, oh, get, don't, <laughs> don't touch me. I think cats are pretty. And I, I think it's totally fine. I just don't like it when they start to do, like, when they start to misbehave. Yeah. So. Well, the most yeah. most of the time, I would say the reason why you're scooting them out of the way is because if you crack that door to the house, one of them tries to dart in, but then they don't know what to do with themselves. They don't want to be in there. Yeah, no. And um, they want to be outside. That's kind of their. I think they're just curious. Yeah. It's like they know what's in there because they've all been inside. All yeah. three cats have been inside. Mm -hmm. but. They get in and then they just start to meow and they kind of look around aimless like, yeah. now what do I do? Yeah, and then I'm nervous. But Cheddar, uh, always he always sprays more when more feral cats start coming yeah. around, which we've noticed a couple of new ones around lately. And they're wild, they're like wild, wild. Um, yeah, but occasionally you get a Cheddar or a Douglas who just shows up and they're kind of already tame. And yeah. You wonder what other person probably sent him down the road because they were spraying <laughs> on their stuff. <laughs> That's exactly right. There is one that looks like it could be Cheddar's brother. Yeah. Big ol' orange Tom, I'm guessing. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. 
Uh, Amy said, where can I find the little butterflies for gnat control? Find the little butterflies for gnat control. Every oh, oh, the butterfly, the little um, stickies. stickies. I just ordered those on Amazon. You can get them in huge packs. And it's handy to have them. Even if I'm not having a massive fungus gnat problem, the second I put seed trays in there, I usually pop those tags in or those sticky traps just as a preventative. It just feels good to have them in there. Um, Brittany said, question about the winter sowing jugs. At what point do you remove the top? Uh, once the seedlings are up and they've kind of produced a little more of a plant look to them, uh, and then once the weather has uh, straightened out a little bit more. We have four more nights under 30, like 28, 27. And then I, like I still have all of our big pots that I planted up wrapped for those nights, but once those four nights are done, they're coming off and I'm just gonna come what may. I mean, they're all tough plants. That's the one benefit about winter sowing jugs. Like, yeah, the top is providing a little extra cover from wind and from extreme cold, but those plants are being exposed to a lot. Mm -hmm. So when you pop the lid off, they can handle quite a lot, way more than our pampered ones in the greenhouse for sure. Simply Homemade and Homegrown said, what kind of artichokes are those? Are they the ones you winter sowed last year or did they, or did you buy them as starts? No, I started those. Um, you know, there might've been a couple that came out of the winter sowing jug, but most of them I started them in a tray in January and they're green globe. I'm pretty sure those were the green globe. I think I had like an imperial, a packet of, is that, is that a variety? I don't know, it sounds right, an imperial artichoke, but I'm pretty sure those are green globe. And all of them that we started and planted super in late in the season are alive. <laughs> like all of them in the cold frames, and I have the cold frames open and have had the cold frames open for a few weeks now. Uh, plus the ones we dug out of the dirt lands and potted up in the greenhouse, those all have fruit on them. These don't yet, but all of them are alive and well, much to Aaron's dismay that the artichokes have survived up here. Are you gonna keep them in there? Well, I want them to produce one time in there and then, and then we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. They wouldn't win her over outside, I don't think, but because they haven't for us before. Uh, Chrissy said, has your olive tree ever produced fruit? Yes, it has. Three. Three olives. Didn't realize they needed to be brined, and I tasted it, and it was nasty. <laughs> uh, is it going to? Uh, it hasn't produced since those three, and it's probably because in the greenhouse, it defoliates every winter, and then I have to cut it way back, and it's looking gorgeous again. Like, it's just pushed a bunch of new leaves, but I probably cut it at the wrong time. I haven't really done a whole lot of learning about olive trees because the only native olive around here is the Russian olive, which they're beautiful trees. They're kind of scrubby, and yeah. but they're like icy blue foliage. When they bloom, the smell in the air, it's, it's so good. It's such a good smell. A new Pioneer Farm said, when I was managing the garden center, someone came in and asked for regular mint. You just said this same thing, not spearmint, but regular mint. What is regular mint? Mint is just mint. Just mint. There's peppermint, spearmint, mint. I don't know. Like There's always, other varieties of mint. Oh though. yeah, grapefruit mint, lavender mint, lime mint. Um, Swiss Ricola mint is my favorite. I think it's sweeter than spearmint, uh, less grassy tasting. Uh, but but I there's see also a variety that's just called mint. Mint, yeah. There's no. It's just like an open. I guess. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I did. I have never even thought about that because I've always seen them just. I've seen plants labeled just mint, and then all the other hundreds of varieties that you can get your hmm. hands on. Okay, next video was transplanting alliums and a new plant load at the garden center. Now, I didn't realize this, but when you dig up alliums with your bare hands, your hands will smell like pot <laughs> for like three days afterward. It was like ingrained yeah. in my fingers. I was surprised how much it smells like marijuana. Yeah, the thing is that like alliums are supposed to be oniony, yeah, right? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> that's what I've been working with were, yeah. were alliums that day. Anyway, so there's your little tip. Um, so we dug up, it must have been close to 100, if not more alliums that day, out of the back garden that used to be in the middle of the boxwood formation that was back there. Uh, and got those transplanted out into the, the Persephone garden and the South garden. And then we ran down to the garden center because they just received a load, like a whole truckload of shrubs and more trees and things, evergreens. So we took a quick look at those and I actually didn't take anything home that day. I think it was like really cold and mm. I was kind of just, I think I said that I was in the greenhouse at the very end. I just said, I think I'm gonna call it like it's chilly. <laughs> and I was just not, you know. Uh, Teresa said, how is the log arbor at the garden center constructed? Is there metal underneath and logs attached to it sound, uh, somehow? Yes. It's like uh, straps, metal, big metal straps. There's a couple of them. And then the wood is, I think, on top of those straps and it's all wired and like bolted on. We've showed it in the video before, but who knows which one. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, 
Also, big shout out to Ken. I ordered a couple things from your store on this on a Sunday and was in my hands on that Friday in Iowa. That's awesome. Nice. Thank you for supporting the store. Uh, Katie Gray said, inquiring minds want to know what came home with you or did you go back for? Uh, nothing that day. Uh, there are a couple rose varieties though that I kind of side-eyed when I was in the greenhouse at the end that I thought, oh, those would be fun uh, to try out. So we'll probably be back. But did you think to yourself, I don't have space for any more roses in my rose garden? Did I? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gretchen said, I would not be able to walk away from the roses. I don't see any regular dogwood trees in your garden. Do they not perform well in your area? In our area, dogwoods are more of an understory tree. So you need to plant them in a space where they've got some protection from the hot, hot afternoon sun. So you don't really see a tremendous amount of them in our area. We do, like they still bring them in. They survive and they, they do their thing. And if you're lucky and you get it in the perfect spot, you might have a dogwood good, close to maturity. Otherwise, it's kind of like a tricolor beach or Japanese maple, you kind of just treat them as understory, like ornamental, small specimen trees. Mm -hmm. um, Nicole's, uh, Nicole Kurth said, will the allium bulbs still bloom this year even after you divided them? Oh, I don't know, we'll see. That'd be really fun if they did. I'm not expecting much though, because I, I upset their root systems quite a lot. Michelle said, any idea how many alliums you transplanted after separating them? You had quite the load. Yeah, after separating them, I, I was probably like 125, I want to guess. I could go count, but I think that's probably close. Uh, KBQ said, any recommendations for roses with no thorns or minimal thorns? Well, the Zephyrine Druin um, climbing roses don't have thorns. That's the only one I know of that's thornless. Hmm. There's, there's another one. Some of them say that, like in their description, they say they're nearly thornless. Which one is it? I think I have it, but I can't remember. It's like Queen of Sweden, hmm. maybe. Next video was seedling care, thinning, separating, and fertilizing, and potting up three gorgeous houseplants. It was a super crummy weather day, so I was very thankful to have some good things to do inside. So I had some seedling trays of snapdragons that need to be thinned. Do you want a shade for your face? No, I'm fine. Are you okay? I mean, unless it, do I look, does it look Well, the, the sun's just right in your face, and so I just wanna make sure. I could pop the shade up for well, you. Well, I've got my, uh... My, the brim of my hat, is which is actually out? shading my eyes. Okay. Well, just let me know, because I can, it's right back there. I'll pop oh, it up okay. right there. Okay, so yeah, I had some snapdragon trays that needed to be thinned, and then we separated some anise hyssop and some lisianthus, and then we fertilized. So I just kind of talked through some of those things. Um, and then we went to the studio and potted up three really pretty houseplants that I had sitting there, and they're still actually sitting right there on the table where I potted them. <laughs> they're getting acclimated before I move them inside. I probably shouldn't move them inside. It's like dun 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 dun, dun, dun as I take house plants into the house. <laughs> Things do way better out here in the Hartley or the studio or the greenhouse because it's part of my routine. Every day I go through each one of these buildings and I look at all the plants and I make sure that things don't need water or whatever the case may be, but in the house, like you're on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Susie said, good evening from the UK. Can someone please help me understand the importance of grow lights? If I'm in the right ballpark, do grow lights have anything to do with stopping ceilings becoming leggy? Absolutely. Um, you need to have strong light for those seedlings in order for them not to stretch for light. Um, so it is very important. And it'll depend on, I mean, your light system will depend on what kind of light tubes, light bulbs you're using. Uh, if you're using regular fluorescent or regular type of lights, you have to lower them quite like four inches above the seedlings. And as the seedlings grow, you move the lights up with them. Uh, we've got the high efficiency LED lights and you don't have to move the ballast up and down. It's so awesome. And I get really nice tight seedlings. Um, occasionally like we'll grow seedlings in here or in the greenhouse, but again, they get strong sunshine because we had a lot of sun here. Uh, we don't have a tremendous amount of gray days, especially in the spring and summer. So yeah, grow lights are pretty important for sure for seedling care. Jennifer said, where can I get a hold of those tongs? Those are from Gardener Supply. They're like meant for those seed starting kits. Do they still sell them? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, user said, I have a lot of houseplants that need repotting. How do you determine what size pot you should move them up to? Usually you wanna, like rule of thumb is move them up one pot size bigger. So if you have an eight inch pot, move them up to a 10 inch pot and so on and so forth. That's like rule of thumb. Footfish said, do you fertilize the winter sowing jugs? No, I have not. And usually I don't until I plant them out. Should you? Maybe. But the thing is, is I didn't start them in seed starting mix. So it's not a lofty light blend. It's regular potting mix, which has a lot more nutrients in it. So it'll feed the seedlings longer. 
Seed starting mix doesn't have... It has stuff in it, but it's just a lighter blend because hmm. seedlings can't take oh, sure. as, mu as many nutrients as like a more established yeah. plant can or, or needs, you know? Yeah. Evelyn said, how do I lift houseplants that have sunk? A few of my plants are very special for my late husband. I was wooded at 31 and I'm afraid of killing them. Well, the best thing to do is just to lift them up if you can and have somebody help you, you know, lift them up and put pack new soil in underneath and around the root ball as needed. We need to do that with the peach. I'm gonna need help with that. The problem with mine, and it, it will depend on your pot too. The pot I have our miniature pixie, miniature peach tree in. It's one of those crescent garden pots. It's kind of double walled, but the top, kind of it curls in a little curls bit. Curls in, but it's it's like hollow. So it's gonna catch. Yeah. It's gonna catch that root ball and it's gonna be a total pain to get out. Yeah. I just know it. <laughs> you almost so need I, to like cut it out. Yeah, I've avoided it. Clearly, I avoided it in the video where I was like, well, I'll do this a different day, <laughs> AKA it probably never will happen, but I need to lift that when it's you sunk could, like six inches. do that as a project, just suppose, all on its own. I suppose. Because that's probably something that other people deal with too. Maybe, maybe, so. well, yeah. Clearly. Is, yeah. Um, user said, I noticed some pinkish red leaves on some of your geranium seedlings and have battled the same thing on mine this year. Do you think it's from overwatering, over fertilizing, or is there some other reason? Mine are coming back slowly, but it definitely set them back a few weeks. I don't deal with that a tremendous amount. I think, the, most of the time when I deal with that, it's usually their first set of leaves that do it and then they kind of fall off and it doesn't happen anymore. Um, if they get cold, sometimes that'll happen. Uh, and then you can start going down that list and try to rectify anything that you think could be stressing the plant because it might be a signal of stress. Usually when it happens, I might I don't worry too much about it because it seems to kind of fix itself. I know that's not super helpful. Flowers for my fam and friends said, no, I almost drove down there to save your thin Lysianthus. So glad you potted up the another tray. Did you say how often you fertilize your seedlings? I might've missed it. Um, yeah, so I was going to just toss the itty bitty Lysianthus and then I counted them and I thought that's enough for another tray. I should probably just pot them up and I'm glad I did. So we ended up, instead of one tray of Lysianthus, we now have three of that one variety. And for certain things, it's worth it things that take forever from seed to you know finished it's worth it and then brian and tammy olson said i'm in zone 9b and i planted a bunch of seeds they are all, all up and i have too many to bump up without leaving them now outside our lows are 40s do you think they're able to hold their own outside Ooh, i don't know that's pretty chilly it depends on the kind of seedling you have but if it's a warm season crop of any kind i probably wouldn't put it outside yet nope. last video for this week was my gray finds are embarrassing and plus more flower bed cleanup. And we also showed like, okay, I know how to employ the art of distraction. If you've got an embarrassing project, just throw Paul at the beginning of the video and at the end. <laughs> and then most of the comments will be about Paul um, and the job he's doing. And then you will, don't notice how crappy my grapevines were let to be. Anyway, so the video did open up with Paul fixing, like adding an extra wire cable to our grapevine trellis, which needed to happen. And I don't know what I was thinking with this, excuse me, with the spacing that I did. I just, I think I make a lot of decisions just on the fly. Sure. Because Eddie put that in and he asked, where do you want, you know, he would have done three or he would have put him exactly where I said it. I just wasn't thinking about it. Anyway, uh, so he added the, the extra one in and then we did our grapevine project. And then at the very end, Paul, we showed him mulching the area by the kitchen, which he just finished, like the whole backside with all the hellebores. And it, he took, like he takes pride in his work and yeah. it's always so perfect and he doesn't mess up my bulbs at all. And uh, I didn't even ask him to do this, but he, that drip line is awesome for so many things. But when we turn on the water system, it like shakes, you know, as water mm -hmm. goes through, it just shakes the drip and uh, the mulch. If you don't put a real thick layer, it just sloughs off and then it exposes those tubes again. And it's just such a bad look to see tubes running through your flower beds. And he took the time to like scrape, like trench underneath each yeah. one of those. And he popped the drip line down in the trench and tacked it down like every two feet with landscape staples and then covered over it with regular dirt and then covered over it with mulch. So, and it, when you're doing that in a bed that's full of bulbs coming up, like you did a premium job. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's satisfying anyway to see mulch go down. Maestra asked, are you going to grow musca muscadines? Muscadine, muscadine? What's Aaron doing in the grass these days? I probably am maxed out on my grape growing for the moment because we've got that structure filled up and I don't have any plans for any other areas to grow them. So I don't know, we'll see what happens in the 
in the future, but Aaron, what are you doing in the grass these days? Not a lot. I'm probably a couple weeks away from uh, aerating the lawn. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to turn the water on. I need to, there not to be any fear of freezing. Mm -hmm. So I can turn the water on and then um, I won't actually water because we're getting tons of moisture, but I want to pop the sprinklers up just long enough to mark them all. Mm -hmm. um, because they, they kind of disappear. Like, I totally forget where all the yeah. sprinklers in the lawn are. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'll run it just briefly just so I can mark them. And that yeah. way I don't break any sprinkler heads mm -hmm. as I'm aerating. And then I'll fertilize and just wait for my first cut. He wanted to burn the lawn. <laughs> the whole lawn. You were watching you videos what? or something? It's or... good for your lawn. It's good How for How long it. would it take to recover from that? A um, couple weeks. That's it? As it's growing. I and... mean... It probably would, it'd be dark until it grew up. There's something about like char. I mean, people put like biochar in yeah. their soil. Right. And I think that's the same idea is that the char. Uh, helps condition the yeah, soil Yeah, helps somehow. condition the soil. Would that be a good, like if you were wanting to kind of alter the mix of grass that you have, would that be a good time to like burn it off and then spread a different type of grass seed on the whole thing? No. You couldn't do that? No, because you're not burning grass that's alive. You're just burning the dead again, so the chaff. All, but but it allows for the seed to actually hit the soil. If you're yeah, from that perspective, I suppose you might. You're opening it up at yeah. least for some of those seeds to possibly sprout and mix in. What would be better though is to um, like scarify your lawn, mm -hmm. or uh, is that the right term? I know what you mean when you say that. Yeah, it's like it. Um, it's like nicking the surface. Yeah, it kind of uh -huh. like it really pulls up all the dead stuff mm -hmm. and brings it to the top and then probably either mow that up or rake it off mm -hmm. and then seed. And sure. I think that would be probably Better. the most beneficial. Would you want to do that with how ours browns out in the winter? Well, I just don't know for certain what other kind of grass will stay greener. Mm -hmm. I think um, some people will overseed with rye in the fall. Just as an perennial annual, like grass. an annual, oh, perennial rye. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, well, or even annual ryegrass, Just to I get guess. That green. And then it'll grow up because it stays fairly green in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And then it will die off in the summer. Mm -hmm. And all of your, like, you know, Kentucky bluegrass and stuff will kind of like take over more mm -hmm. if you've got a mix going. Right. Um, and then you can just do that every year. Yeah, that's probably for people who are like really wanting it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Which I kind of am. Yeah. <laughs> I would do that. Uh huh. Be worth it. So if you burned off the lawn, would you burn them all off or just one? Well, you, like the grass that I'm looking at here in our front, it's way too green. You wouldn't be able to burn it. That looks nice. That. Like, what is the difference? Why does this lawn look yeah. so green and the grass closer to the house where the existing lawn was? Like, what blend of grass is that versus what we put in? Well, I'm guessing that some of it has to do with uh, just like the radiated heat from the house. You think? Yeah. Because on this side, this is well, far away from the house. This has some radiating heat from the Hartley. But it's always been green, even when the Hartley wasn't here. I don't know. I don't know. I need people to tell me. Because <laughs> we seeded that whole lawn in the front mm -hmm. all the same. It was the perennial rye and Kentucky bluegrass mix. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's like a very distinct line where... Part of it stays green all winter, and mm -hmm. then part of it, the other part is just super brown. Right. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Yeah. Stephanie said, could you just dig up your plants and move them, Sarah, closer under the cable and turn the direction you want them? They're actually right under the cable. I know it doesn't look like that, but they are planted right under the cable. So essentially what I should have done is I should have grabbed the one I wanted to be a trunk and tied it up to the cable. Or put, like I put the bamboo stake uh, behind one of them to try to rectify one of their branches. Um, but I should have done that as a training thing. I didn't want the trunk right on a beam, though, like on right, right on one of the four by four beams. I wanted to see the trunks. Um, so that's what I should have done is trained that trunk up and then I would have, it would have been perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, I know it doesn't look like they are underneath it, but they are. Uh, Ellen said, is there a reason you only want one branch going up on the fourth plant around 1320? There were two main branches you were choosing from. Would it be bad to leave both? Um, I want to, I want the plant to focus all of its energy on one. Basically, at this point, I want it to become something that's sturdy and stocky, and I only want one going up. It's kind of a personal preference, really. Um, I want one going up, and then I want the cordons going from side to side in the end. I don't know if I'm going to get it there. We'll see. 
Um, Miller Meadows said, do you ever have problems with blue jays stealing grapes? If you, uh, if so, how can a person keep them from doing so? We don't have blue jays, so um, we don't have blue jays stealing them. However, we did move. We have that bird feeder. We have it back out there because our neighbors enjoy watching the birds in the winter time. Um, when the grape season rolls around and berry season, we take that bird feeder down because it's right on top. It's perched on top of one of the grape beam posts right there. Um, Anyway, so you don't want to like chum the birds in with yeah. bird seed and be like, here's all of our berry crop. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so we do move that. No, I haven't had to net anything yet. The only thing I have noticed birds eating are the blueberries. Like the ones that are the hardest to get here because we do not have the conditions to grow blueberries are the ones the birds want to eat. Mm. Robins will eat them. Ugh. Robins are so pretty though. And I've seen lots of them around already. Mrs. Bobber said, thank you for all the grape info. Question, we planted two baby grape plants last year on a cattle panel trellis, two cattle panels in a gothic art shape. It's beautiful, I bet it is. They put on a bunch of growth but produced no fruit. Could I just let them go and do their thing because there is room on the trellis or should I still prune? If you, well, it depends. In baby stage, if you're wanting them to cover the trellis, you could let them go. Um, when you prune them back, the goal is to prune them back so that the, um, plant has a lot of energy to produce nice big fruit. So I suppose once you get the structure that you want and you've got some main branches that are kind of creating that, then you can start pruning canes back um, and pruning some of that growth. So uh, definitely once they put on more size and they are more mature, you'll want to think about pruning them more. And the last question from this week is from Rose McCoy. What type of mulch is he spreading? It's compost. We put forested um, compost down and I don't know that much about it except for I know it's it's like almost compost. It's like not all the way compost. Mm -hmm. And it's from the other side of Oregon. Yeah. We just get it in bulk from a local place that sells bulk things, Ontario Rock and Landscape Supply. Um, and they just bring big truckloads of it when we text them. <laughs> yeah. um, I think we're expecting another one. We go through several truckloads in a year. But I think it's improving our soil. Oh, yeah. Using that instead of using like a bark mulch or whatever, which is totally fine. Um, our soil, I just feel like... If we're going to be spreading something anyway and the soil needs to be worked and it needs to be conditioned let's just put compost down it is more expensive for sure but we get better results with our plants i think so anyway that is it you guys thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one bye